Well, hi there. Horned lizards are unquestionably stinking rad. I think that chameleons and leaf-tailed geckos are incredibly rad, but they are not clearly more rad than these desert camo anteating spike saucers. I think the only lizard that is clearly radder is their Australian cousin, the thorny devil, and only because they take this whole spike saucer concept to the next level. Honestly, they look like something that Jabba the Hutt would keep under his palace to feed Twi'leks, Gamorrean guards, and the occasional Jedi Knight. That said, our North American alternative is unbelievably cool. And if being a desert camo anteating spike saucer isn't cool enough, most species can also shoot stinky blood out of their eyes if they feel threatened. There's a lot to be said for being a good fighter, but never underestimate the efficacy of just doing something crazy and unexpected. The reality is that horn lizards make their living hanging out by ant nests, generally harvester ants, holding still and relying on their incredible desert camo. If that fails, they will run a few feet and then go back into desert camo mode. If that didn't work, all right, shoot a little stinky blood in your face. If you found me despite my killer camo, you probably smelled me out. How's that working with all that stinky blood on your face? That's what I thought. So the question remains, is the tiny, spiky, blood dilophosaurus of the desert a good pet lizard? And is it the best pet lizard for you? Spoiler alert, it isn't. Not unless you have a lot of money or harvester ants. But let's score it anyway, just because they're so rad. And I'll let you know about one species that might be an exception. So. Those categories, as always, are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the horned lizard a score of three out of five. As you can see, they aren't difficult to handle. They simply don't like to be handled. To pick up your horned lizard, you're probably going to need to come at it from above, like a shrike. And if you're not familiar with shrikes, shrikes are these crazy birds. They're you know, not large, they look a lot like kind of a big sparrow, but they've got a hooked beak like a falcon. And they go around mostly looking for horned lizards and other small lizards, and they get them and they impale them on thorns and barbed wire. That's how they roll. And so when you go to pick up your horned lizard, it's like, oh, this is it for me. I'm gonna be hung up on the spikes. So they don't love that. The lizard will probably try to run away from you. It probably won't paint your face though, so. That's a bonus. It also won't bite, scratch, or whip with that tiny little tail, which I don't think they can voluntarily drop. It will just hold perfectly still, like you can see here, and wait for a chance to run away. It isn't dangerous for you to hold your horned lizard, but they certainly get nothing from it. It will be just like holding a spiky saucer that is hating the experience and may run away if given the chance. Is it possible? Yes. Is it fun for anybody? Probably not. And as a result, I'm actually going to put this little guy in an enclosure for the rest of this video, just so he doesn't have to feel freaked out any more than is absolutely necessary. By the way, this particular horned lizard is King Boomy, and he belongs to our friend Tanner. And if you want to see more pictures of him, where you got to go is to Tanner's awesome Instagram, which is just isopods. He got the name Isopods. So if you just go to Instagram, check out Isopods. Tanner keeps all sorts of rad isopods. He's got like 18 species of isopods right now and his collection is growing. And on top of that, he's got this bodacious horned lizard. So if you wanna see more pictures down the road, if you just wanna follow how Boomy's doing, go ahead and follow Tanner. We'll have a link to that down in the description. The reality though is Boomy, though he's pretty good for a horned lizard, He's been in captivity for a long time. He's actually a proven breeder male, but generally speaking, they're not that great for handling. If you want a spiky saucer that is easy to handle and seems to be okay with it, get a bearded dragon. That's what you really want. I'd like to take just a moment to thank our rad fans and stinking rad fans at Patreon. You guys do so much to make this channel better. And of course we have a lot of features to try to pay you back for all that you do for us. So, you know, if you were interested in what those features are or in just supporting this channel, please go check out our Patreon page. There's a link to it down in the description. When it comes to care, we give the horned lizard a score of one out of five. The reason for this, well, it can be summed up in one word, ants. In three words, lots of ants. 
In many words, if you don't have constant access to lots of ants, especially harvester ants, then do not get a horned lizard, even though there is one species that does well on fewer ants. And again, I'll tell you more about that in a minute. There are some companies that are working on a formic acid supplement, which is a really key component of ants that is important for the health of these lizards. And that can be used to dust crickets for anteating species like horned lizards. And this might help a lot in terms of the nutrition for your lizard, but the reality is they might not eat the crickets. And even if they do, we're talking about a heck of a lot of crickets. These guys can eat upwards of like 100 carpenter ants a day. So 100 carpenter ant sized crickets a day is pretty expensive unless you're breeding your own crickets. Depending on where you live, you might be able to order in some harvester ants, but you seriously have to bet on at least $10 a week for ants, and that's just for one horned lizard, and that certainly adds up over the year. What you probably need is an active harvester ant colony with a queen. Do you know I almost did my PhD on ants? That's how rad I think they are. Sorry, sorry for the ants tangent. Uh, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, horned lizards. Horned lizards eat ants, and ants are amazing! But so are horned lizards, and the rest of their care is fairly typical for desert lizards. They need a fairly hot basking spot. Make sure they can retreat to a cooler side. For this reason, I think a 20 gallon long is the smallest enclosure I would use, because something like a 10 gallon, if you've got a really hot basking spot on one side, the cool side is not very far away from that. Uh, a 20 gallon long gives you a lot more space. This enclosure, by the way, is for showing this lizard off to you. This is not the enclosure I would use for one, but it's actually not terribly different. I would just recommend something even bigger, and a lid's a good idea. They also, in addition to that hot basking spot, they're gonna need pretty high levels of UVB, like many desert basking species. And real sand is a great substrate for them. Don't use calcium sand though. Lizards have a tendency to ingest a whole lot of it and it can cause some really severe digestive problems, even death of your lizard. So not calcium sand, but real sand, these guys do really well on real sand. Access to water will be important, so they should have a little water bowl. They don't need to be able to swim in it or anything, and their substrate doesn't need to be wet. These guys need an enclosure that favors floor space over vertical space, though they will climb a bit on rocks and sticks. Most of the time, they're gonna be right on the ground. It's gonna need a lid. I said, you know, they're not really climbers, but a lid is a good idea, and it's just a good place to rest your lamps, if nothing else. When it comes to hardiness, we give the horned lizard a score of one out of five. This score would be much higher if you had a harvester ant colony. That said, most people do not have a harvester ant colony, and very few people without one will be able to keep these guys alive. Proper heat will be the other issue. Also remember that ants can kill lizards, so be careful about how you introduce the lizard to its food. When it comes to availability, we give the horned lizard a score of two out of five. They aren't that easy to find, and in my opinion, that's totally fine. I have seen them captive bred in an expo, uh, but this is rare. Like, like I said before, this particular horned lizard is a proven breeder male. So I have seen them captive bred at an expo, but that's very rare. If you see them at a pet shop that doesn't sell ants, find a new pet shop. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the horned lizard a score of three out of five. You're gonna need an ant colony, so get that going now. And that will cost something, and it'll take it months to really get up and running. So you're gonna wanna do that long before you ever get your horned lizard. The rest isn't too bad. The, the tank that you need for these guys is very inexpensive. The lid's inexpensive. You need some sand, a water bowl, some hides, UVA and UVB lamps. So there will be some cost there. And then you're done. But you do need a thriving ant farm or else this score goes lower because you're going to need to set aside thousands of dollars to feed this lizard over the course of its life. If you have a thriving harvester ant colony, then you will have no trouble finding them online. If you don't have a harvester ant colony or a ton of money to buy hundreds of harvester ants and have them shipped to you each week, then you do not want a horned lizard. And this is why we give the horned lizard an overall score of 2.0 out of five. If what you want is an awesome, spiky desert lizard that needs a lot of heat and UVB and does well in captivity, then what you want is a bearded dragon. If you want it to be smaller and are willing to pay a bit more and look a little harder, then what you want is a Rankin's dragon. If you don't have a harvester ant colony or a ton of money to have hundreds of harvester ants shipped to you each week, then you do not want a horned lizard. But I promised you that there would be an exception, and that is true. Phrynosoma osseo, the giant Mexican horned lizard is a species of horned lizard that eats a much more varied diet. 
You should still offer ants at times, or at least supplement dusted crickets, but these have promise in the future, and they are being captive bred in small numbers. For now, leave them in the hands of the breeders, but these might be a possibility in the future for those of you that simply must have a horned lizard. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Honestly, they look like something that Jabba the Hutt would keep under his palace to feed Twi'leks, Gamorrean guards, and the occasional Jedi Knight. Those were, that was uh, some deep powers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> They'll just sit at the edge of one of these rings, and they're just like, oh, hey. That's the day. Keep going, keep going. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the whole day. That's their life. All right. Thorny devils do the same thing, by the way. They're awesome.